Hello, everyone. This is Tim Pichot, and welcome to the Liberty Advisor Podcast. It has been several months since the last time I made a podcast, and I'm going to get into that a little bit later on. Uh, I have a lot of changes, both in my uh, prof- professional life and personal life, that sort of necessitated going on a little bit of a break. But uh, yeah, we're, a lot of stuff has gone on, obviously, in the political world, the capital markets, the crypto markets. And uh, yeah, I mean, so those are all the subjects we usually cover. So if you guys are new here, uh, the subjects that we cover are usually economics, politics, uh, the stock market and crypto. But today's we're going to focus today's podcast. We're going to primarily focus on politics and specifically I wanted to get into shadow banning as that's something that I've been hit extremely hard with. And now that's really a term that's starting to come out into the public ethos. I mean, you even got Donald Trump tweeting about being shadow banned. And uh, more recently, you have Alex Jones, the purge of Alex Jones, where, you know, he's the man that you're not allowed to talk about. He's been banned off Facebook, off Apple, off uh, off YouTube, off Spotify, because he is the person that uh, both the left and the right don't want to know about. And actually, this is something where over a year ago, I had a Facebook employee tell me that I was shadow banned. And this was even before uh, shadow ban was even something that, you know, anyone had really ever even heard of. So I'm really glad that now, well, I'm not glad that everyone's being shadow banned, but I am glad that now that it is something that is out in the uh, you know public ethos of that it's actually being well known. And uh, for those of you who, you know who are maybe new listeners, uh, I would really urge you guys uh, and actually anybody really to head over to howitsrigged.com. We're over there have a free ebook on basically how they manipulate the economic data, the inflation data, the unemployment data. And as we've seen with the purge of Alex Jones, it's not enough to have you know a bunch of Facebook followers. They're not your friends. They're not my friends. We're not friends until we actually have an email. And it's not so I can go spam you guys with a whole bunch of email. Otherwise, this is the game I would have been playing, you know, two years ago when I first signed up. Is because, you know, once the purge happens, I need to have a way to be able to get in front of the people who, you know, were following me all along. Because there's going to come a time and point where you're not going to be able to follow me anymore. It's an 18-page book. It's concise. I could have made it probably 200 pages, but we didn't need to make it 200 pages. If you can get out the message in 18, why do you make it 200? So, You know, I'm sure a lot of times, and again, this was made actually during Obama's presidency to counteract all the lies when he was talking about how great the GDP was or how great the inflation numbers were or how great, um, you know, basically all the other uh, GDP numbers. And so we go through and have a deep dive of exactly how they rigged the numbers. And this is probably something that uh, candidate Trump would probably agree with a little bit more than uh, President Trump, but to each their own. But, you know, as it stands, you know, I'm not really... I eventually would like to divorce myself from Facebook completely. I would like to do that sooner than later, but you know, I'm sort of right now don't want to just you know jump off and all of a sudden I've got you know five people following me on another platform and you know my message is diluted because initially the reason I created the Facebook page was you know not so I can get you know famous, not so I could you know all of a sudden you know be some guy that gets tons of likes. I could care less about that. It's because I didn't want to you know all of a sudden you know talk to nobody. I didn't want to make all this effort, all this time all this energy and then talk to five people. And now here we go, have, you know, over 30,000 people following me and, you know, I'm talking about five people. So, you know, we need a way around these thought police. We need around uh, the sensors. And I'm going to get into my own personal shadow banning and how bad it's been, because personally, I think I've got one of the worst cases of shadow banning there's probably ever been. And if I show you guys the actual insights of what this looks like, it is absolutely ridiculous. And again, the emails are not so I can spam you guys. And I hate, you know, I keep saying, and again, and again, I guess it would, it would, this is really for the first time, but you know, all this really comes down to is I was actually, believe it or not, listening to the Alex Jones show, uh, the day before the, uh, before the, uh, purge, before the night of the long knives came out, I was driving back from San Diego. I was like, okay, I've got this Alex Jones app. Uh, I wanted to listen to it live. And I had the, I had the previous app, which wasn't that good. It was buggy. It always, uh, you know, cut in and out. There used to be a good one several years ago. Then they had an, an update in the iTunes store, and uh, that one didn't work anymore. So the new app is phenomenal. You can go and get uh, Owen Troyer's show and Roger Stone's show at the, uh, I think it's called, the uh, not the Real News. That's with uh, David, uh, what's his name? David Knight, which that one is a great one as well. Then they've got the War Room, and that's the one with Owen Troyer and Roger Stone, which I highly recommend that. And of course, you've got the Alex Jones show. So, you know, people need to, you know, get out of these internet gulags and need to get out of these internet ghettos and we need to create our own stuff. So that's why I'm getting back into this. That was the fire under my ass to, you know, finally start going back, finally start podcasting once again. And, you know, truth be told, I actually, you know, I was an Alex Jones listener probably from about 2010 to right after the election. 
Uh, then afterwards, uh, you know, I started focusing more on blockchain solutions, started focusing on, you know, actually other platforms. Uh, not that I really done a whole lot with it, but I, I saw where Alex was. He was kind of keeping you on like this merry-go-round of fear where, you know, they it were really the only solution that, you know, they ever talked about was, you know, keeping trust or keeping, you know, Donald Trump in office and getting Donald Trump in office. But, you know, ultimately, I think there's some other bigger systemic problems that are out there. And, you know, it's much, much bigger than just Donald Trump. And yes, Donald Trump is doing a much better job of the, with the economy than Hillary Clinton. But if you have a Ponzi scheme, I don't care if you're the best financial manager out there. If you're running a Ponzi scheme, ultimately, you have to come to grips with the fact that you are running a Ponzi scheme. And really, InfoWars became, you know, this 24-7, you know, Donald Trump love fest. And I think some of the initial focus sort of shifted away. But to each his own, you know, he is the man in the arena. I'm not, uh, and, and the reason I was listening to him and not some of the other people I listened to, like uh, Ernest Hancock, was because Ernie was on a uh, one-week vacation up at Jackalope. So, you know, decided I would switch it up a little bit. Uh, and really what they were talking about right before the shadow ban was, you know, the Chinese censorship. I mean, I think Alex was even getting into, you know, a few days before the news broke about how Diane Feinstein had that Chinese spy in there. They're talking about, you know, Apple, how they had been taken over by, you know, the Chinese and how the Chinese had them by the you know what and and really you know that's the information that's part of the information that they don't want you to know and when you look at the ban and why they were actually banned and you try to you know actually l find the videos well now it's like almost impossible to find the videos because they went ahead and they got rid of the alex jones uh, youtube channel but i did find some of them because one of them was actually uh, a video of this uh actually let me back up to some of the other ones so you've got uh, there was a, a kid, maybe he's like 13, 14 years old. And then you've got, you know, this guy that was probably 40, 50 and the, the guy's trying to walk and, and, uh, you know, little kids kind of like chest bumping him and like hitting him and pushing him repeatedly. And, and I don't know, maybe the whole thing was staged. I don't, I don't know. But anyways, eventually it gets to the point where the adult, the 45 year old takes the 14 year old and kind of pushes him to the ground. He doesn't, you know, beat his ass. He doesn't give him a whooping, doesn't do anything else. He just pushes him to the ground. And then the little 14-year-old who'd been, you know, hitting him all along and instigating this, you know, basically started crying like a little bitch. And, it, and then there was an ad that said, you know, this is how you defeat liberalism, maybe 40 seconds long. It was originally from an ABC News clip. And that is what they deem as bullying. That's what they deem as harassment. And that is what the thought police, uh, I guess the thought police, it's actually my initials, uh, not that I'm the thought police or, you know, trust the plan. TTP, that's my initials, uh, you know, that's something I just realized right now in terms of the Thought Police. Uh, so just add one more to the list. But uh, another video they had, I actually have this that I'm going to show up for you guys. I was able to find it. You know, you go, it, it's tough to find because, you know, again, you know, with the Alex Jones channel going down, it's not easy to find this. But this was a report by uh, Millennial Millie, or Millie Weaver. She does a lot of great reporting. And so here she is going to a, um, like a drag queen show where there's a bunch of little kids there. You've got a, this adult guy, you know, on his ground, on the ground, shaking his ass, and here we go. Song is kind of catchy. All right, this is the Infowars bumper that we're showing right now. Reporting for Infowars.com. So here's okay. Let me. I'm gonna skip ahead where they've got this little kid who's in drag. A woman in drag. We've even recently seen Lactatia, the eight-year-old boy whose parents allow him to dress in drag so he can be paraded around at drag festivals. Isn't that lovely? I know who's lactating today. I am a lactator, honey. Drag is, all, is an all-ages thing. Drag should be an all-ages thing, and some people consider it provocative. It's not inappropriate. I mean, it's not something the parents should be afraid of if their kids do, so. So that the liberals can thus promote children should be encouraged to transition to whatever sexuality they want, even though we're finding out that there are complications associated, such as the hormones causing the boys to have penises that are stunted. There's definitely... Okay, here's... here's I'm going to skip ahead. She let me back it up a tiny bit, because... Let's let's get the name of this person that's coming out here. This is what they're teaching the kids. Ashley says teach the children. That was just by coincidence. Here we go. I actually do story time with drag queens in Chicago. Right? And you are not allowed to comment on this or else you are hateful to trannies. Yes. If all of the children in the audience can plug their ears, um, because I'm just kidding. Trump's our president. We can say whatever we want. 
please welcome to the stage, Country Hornet! Yep, that's the See You Next Tuesday Horny, telling all little kids, oh, don't cover your ears, Trump's president, so... Okay, and here's a here's a part where you got little kids who are going up to basically you know pretty much naked guys who are kissing them who are you know and there's another part in here where it shows this uh, guy basically dressed up as like a baphomet teaching little kids. You know, let's see if we can find this. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this for a second. So. I'm going to think and talk at the same time. But one of the other videos they had banned was Paul Joseph Watson uh, talking about, you know, the different Muslim invasion going on in Europe and how, you know, and the crime rate associated with that and, you know, trying to correlate the two. So now you're, you know, uh, hateful against Muslims. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I found it. ...and promoting this drag fetish culture to... I don't know. This is like a, it's like a unicorn Bothamed, uh person, a transgendered individual who's at a library talking to a bunch of three-year-olds about transgenderism. And I don't care, you know, who you are, if you're transgendered, I don't care about any of that stuff, but I do not want you teaching three-year-olds how it's okay to basically, you know, question their sexuality and try to sexualize these little kids. Because at that point, that is absolutely predatory. And this was one of the videos, one of the four videos that the Thought Police banned Alex Jones from. So let me play this out a little bit longer. Young children. There aren't a lot of kid drag queens. They're considered inappropriate. But like, inappropriate just means that you look good. I'm eight years old, get it right. But do they really need to be being paraded around and given this knowledge into a taboo fetish-like culture at such a young age? That seems like a topic for kids that are much older. We're talking teenagers and even young adults, not for young school children. Let's pause it right here. If, if anyone who's actually watching this, I know a lot of you, most of you are probably listening to this, but for those of you who are watching this, this these are these these girls in this picture look like they're my daughter's age. They look like they're three years old, four years old. Uh, ones in the background look like they're my younger daughter's age. She's only a year and a half years old. She was actually born on Trump's first day in office or the first full day without Obama. So, you know, we had to go and celebrate a little bit early, but let's uh, get off of that. So again, we, yeah, we had the Paul Joseph Watson video and then there was one other, I wasn't sure what the other one was because again, they don't actually link to these. And now that they've taken the YouTube channel off, it's very, very hard to find these videos. But let's just think of all the different, you know, stars that have really come from the Alex Jones show. I mean, most recently you've got Mike Cernovich. Yeah, he had a big Twitter following before, but you know, it wasn't really until he was uh, regular on the Alex Jones show that all of a sudden, you know, he really blew up. And actually, I mean, not to you know toot my own horn, but my uh, Facebook page was actually uh, much bigger than uh, Mike Cernovich's uh, until he started appearing on the Alex Jones show. So leading up to the election and after the election, uh, I was my page was actually bigger than Mike Cernovich's. Just throwing it out there. Uh, without all the other media fanfare that was going on. So you've got other guys like Stefan Molyneux, uh, Lauren Southern, Luke Radowski. That didn't really mean to actually put both of those two right next to each other. And I know that, uh, that they're not talking anymore. And, and that, actually, that's Luke and Alex aren't talking anymore. I'm not going to get into uh, Luke and Lauren's business. But then you've got guys like Jack Fasobic, Joe Biggs, David, David Knight, uh, Dr. Steve Pachenik. You know, the list just keeps going on and on. I mean, even like half of Ron Paul's initial money bomb came from Alex Jones listeners. So subsequently that then helped get, um, you know, his son Rand Paul into office. You got guys like Roger Stone who were given a platform. And that's probably the real, real person that, uh, that the media did not want you seeing. You got, uh, you know, NSA whistleblowers like William Binney. You've got Seabell Edmonds, uh, right, Ahmad Salam, who was in the original 1993 hijacking, talking about, uh, you know, how he was basically originally supposed to be given, you know, infiltrate these terror cells and he was given fake bombs and fake remotes, and then he was given, you know, real bombs, fake remotes, then real bombs and real remotes, and then realized he was being set up and had the whole thing on a wire. You've got, uh, what's his name, uh, Kirk Haskell, the underwear bomber. Uh, now, he wasn't the underwear bomber, but he was a whistleblower who was exposing that whole plot of the underwear bomber. You've got, you know, even like James Corbett, you know, and he, he had a following before that, but, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people found out about him from there. You know, I personally found out about Adam Kokesh 
from there, you've got uh, whistleblowers like Tosh Plumley, who was, you know, on the planes with the C-47s, taking the weapons from, uh, I believe it was from Libya into Turkey, then so that way they can be smuggled from Turkey then back into our into Syria. And then you've got Rand Paul questioning Hillary, and she's like, Turkey, what's a what's a Turkey? Uh, you've also have you know the DC madam who was on there who then ended up you know suiciding herself shortly thereafter. I'm probably forgetting hundreds of other people's names. Uh, you've got you know like Dan Bongino was blown up there. Uh, you've got you know L- Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer who you know was basically you know risking his life by uh, you know exposing everything that was going on, or at least his career by exposing everything that was going on in Benghazi about two or three days after Benghazi. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, eventually started hearing parts of the story, you know, a year, two years, three years later. But if you were an Alex Jones listener, you heard that story uh, days later. And so it's just so frustrating to see the media lying about so much, deceiving so much, omitting so much, and then to see Alex absolutely right on everything, or at least right on this. I don't want to say everything because then, you know, that's going to take it out of context. But in terms of especially Benghazi and Syria, I mean, he was talking about how this whole thing was going to be used as, you know, first going into Libya, how that was going to be used as a pretext to then, you know, bring down, uh, you know, bring down Gaddafi. And then that was going to be, you know, we were using Al Qaeda forces in there. And then who were, then they ended up, you know, conveniently changing the name to ISIS after we're, you know, funding guys like Al Nusra Front and the Free Syrian Army. And, you know, it's just so many just data points that he was just on from, you know, calling out uh, way before everybody else, you know, back when, you know, John McCain was still vouching for these guys. And back when John McCain was actually, you know, taking pictures with, you know, the leader of ISIS and talking about how great of guys we were. And then, you know, we were going to bring this force to then destabilize. It, it, basically, you know, then it was going to have this whole, you know, Muslim invasion going on in uh, in Europe and, and, you know, all this different stuff that he was just so on point be way before it even happened. You know, it's one thing to, you know, Monday morning quarterback this. It's another thing to be so far out in front of this that, you know, that that is one of the main reasons why they don't want him on. And I apologize to, you know, the hundreds of other people's names and whistleblowers and important documents that he's exposed, probably thousands of documents that he's exposed over the years, whether it's, you know, Operation Mockingbird, whether it's, you know, Operation Gladio, whether it's, you know, a uh, Gulf of Tonkin incident, whether it's obviously 9-11 where, he even called out 9-11 right before it even happened, about two months before. I think it was like June 21st or June 26th, uh, 2001. He, you know, he made a video where he basically said, you know, when we know that if there are, you know, a World Trade Center, uh, you know, if they start flying planes and, oh, like Operation Northwoods, another document he exposed. You know, and there's so many data points here that, you know, it's just hard to really, you know, do this when you are, you know, uh, basically somewhat winging it down here. I had a couple, couple points written on the screen, but, you know, didn't really have, you know, all of this written down. So then you also have, you know, one of the big arguments people are making is, so as a libertarian, one of the really tricky issues is, you know, dealing with the fact that we are dealing with a private company. But, you know, in the, in the case of Google, I mean, Google was actually formed by InQtel, was the major private equity company that helped fund, uh, <clears throat> that funded Google. And InQtel is actually the CIA's private equity firm or venture capitalist firm that you can actually Google, Google, oh, yeah, Google that. Yeah, Google the fact that it was uh, formed by the CIA. And now I just actually started using DuckDuckGo to try to get myself away from using Google. Uh, and another thing is I was, I was on my computer now and I'm using Chrome. And for some reason now it keeps popping up the virtual keyboard. And so anyways, you know, that's super annoying. So now I will be moving away from there and trying to use uh, Firefox, which I was primarily using anyways. But one of the arguments people are using is, that, hey, this is a public company. So it's a public company. They can do whatever they want. But the problem is they built this as a public commons. They then have argued that they are a utility. And then, you know, they also you know, took on people like myself's advertising money and then decided to completely screw us over. And, you know, the other thing is, you know, you know, what if, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you want to go and, uh, you know, it's 1800s and you want to go on a, a railroad. You know, are you going to be banned from, you know, could be, it's like saying, oh, you just build your own railroad. Or, you know, you want to, you know, you get banned from, you know, standard oil. Oh, you know, you can just start your own oil company. And so, you know, so many different examples oh, like, oh, you can just, you know, start your own domain register system. Oh, you know, you start your own you know, server farm or, oh, you know, start your own, you know, uh, you know, GoDaddy type company. And, and GoDaddy didn't do anything to him. I'm just using that as an example. And then, and then some people out there even tried to have tried building their own system like Andrew Torba over at Gab. And then what did they tell him? Oh, now you've got Microsoft's cloud system, their Azure, uh, A-Z-U-R-E, trying to say, oh, well, you know, Two pe- one person made two anti-Semitic posts on there, 
And so we're going to take you down for, over that. And so I did go to the website last night, and it looks like those posts have been taken down. They did have to capitulate to them. But it's just absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, I could see maybe, you know, in one of those examples, if you're, you know, uh, you know, dressed in KKK regalia, going to some event to go lynch a bunch of people, that maybe they can ban you on those uh, circumstances. But, you know, the whole thing is, smells to me of racketeering where you've got, you know, Facebook, Google, Spotify, Apple, who all went ahead on the same day, even MailChimp, for Christ's sakes. Uh, so now they can't even email people uh, because of how like, the Internet is structured that you can't really just send out, you know, you can't just go into Outlook and have, you know, 50,000 emails going out uh, because that will get caught up in all the different spam filters. And even Discuss, or Discuss, I'm not sure how you how you pronounce it, I think it's like D-I-S-Q-U-S, you know, they won't even allow him to, they won't even moderate his comments anymore because, you know, what they'll do is they'll, they'll get some guy in there you know, saying that, you know, they should go, you know, say some, you know, super provocative stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, now they'll say, you know, Alex was promoting extremism by letting these comments on there. And, uh, you know, oh, this has, you know, to some extent, you know, caused financial pain, uh, you know, on my own end. I was, you know, some people, a lot of people don't know that, but my broker dealer found out that I was talking about certain things. They found out that I was, you know, also talking about cryptocurrencies, which then, open Pandora's box to everything else. And they pretty much said, you know, you either, either need to quit this stuff or you need to quit us. So I ended up quitting them, which, you know, has, you know, personally, you know, cost me uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars making that move. Now, a lot of that had to do with cryptocurrencies, not necessarily, uh, you know, the information I was getting out in terms of politics. But, you know, I can tell you right now, they did not like uh, the political message that I was talking about. And, you know, you can only imagine why. And just to also give you guys a story about the, the playing field is I had a shirt uh, and the shirt was just, uh, it was called, um, let me, let me just pull it up right now. Uh, it's over at defeat the globalist.com. So you guys can understand you know, where I'm coming from that I would of course name something called uh, defeat the globalist, but I had a shirt on there that said Americans before illegals. So here we go. Here's uh, the thought criminal right now having a shirt called Americans before illegals. And it was just a picture of me wearing the shirt and which you guys can get at defeat the globalist.com. We have both the uh, USA version, and we've got a cheaper, uh, you know, not made in America version, and so it's got the Gadsden flag on there. Also, has the American flag. It's red. It looks, I think, it looks pretty good. It looks cool. Sort of a, you know, kind of washed out, faded look in the middle there. Uh, which, you know, if you get it, you know, don't be surprised by that. We also have, you know, deport George Soros, Americanism, not globalism. Trump is my president, and we've got some of the more uh, libertarian type stuff, like make America free again, make taxation theft again. And, uh, you know, we've got some of the nice, some real nice veterans shirts on there as well. Veterans before illegals, again, has sort of that washed out feel to it. The Trump is my president. You know, that is surely going to trigger a whole bunch of people out there. And so anyways, I just posted a picture of myself wearing this, tried to boost it, and they would not even let me boost it. And so I wanted to actually run down the rabbit hole of what it would take to get to actually allow me to boost this. And in order for me to boost this post, I had to send in uh, my driver's license. Then I had to, you know, give them my address. Then they had to mail me something to confirm it was really me. And I had to give them my social security number. I knew I was moving anyway, so, you know, that was part of the reason why I did it because, you know, I'm at a different address now than I was before. Uh, so I was like, okay, you know, let me just, you know, be sort of like a test case on this for everybody else. And again, this was just a picture of me wearing it. But because it said Americans before illegals, you know, you can't promote America on a fascist book. And so I wasn't allowed to post that. But if you're you know, wanting to post about hope and change or want to post about Bernie Sanders, you want to, you know, talk about killing the president or all these other things, you know, you're allowed to do that. And so for me, I think that this is a case of actual, you know, racketeering, a case of uh, basically the, these monopolists getting together and actually deciding, you know, what you can and can't do. I mean, in the, you know, what if, uh, you know, Alexander Graham Bell said, okay, well, you know, we don't like what you're saying. So, you know, you're banned from using AT&T. So, you know, am I going to go start my own cell phone company? I'm going to start my own, uh, you know, landline company. I mean, give me a, give me a break. So at a certain point, you know, you can't have it both ways. You can't say that you're a utility, but then at, at, at the same time, say, and you're a common ground. And at the same time, you know, have this, you know, editorial, um, you know, this, this editorial, um, I guess, preference where, you know, you're, you're having the news feed where it's all nothing but, you know, Hillary propaganda, it's DNC propaganda. And then our stuff is buried. Nobody can even see our stuff. And now they were, you know, allowing us on there before the election because they figured, okay, Hillary has it in the bag. You know, why are we going to, you know, all these Republicans are out here, you know, basically just, you know, spinning the wheels because we are going to win uh, anyways. So anyways, if you, long story short, if you guys want to support me, please go to defeattheglobalist.com. That's one way you can do it. 
Uh, another quick plug for myself, what we're doing also is self-directed IRAs. That's where, let's say, if you are you know, an expert on, um, I don't know, rental income, or if you're an expert on you know, flip, uh, making your own businesses and you want to do so in a tax-efficient manner, you can actually put your own company inside of an IRA. You can buy cryptocurrencies inside of IRAs. You can do hard money lending, tax liens, all sorts of advanced stuff. Uh, I'm not saying that you should necessarily do this. I mean, it, only if you actually know what you're doing uh, should you actually get involved in that stuff. But that is one area that we can do. Uh, also, you know, if you aren't really, you know, completely 100% sold on the economic recovery or you're getting close to retirement and you want to be able to protect some of your gains, we do have a lot of good uh, protected growth strategies that we run as well. Again, you know, talk to your financial advisor if you don't have one or you don't like him. Uh, you know, you can give myself a ring. Again, you can uh, go to, not again, I haven't, I haven't told you the email have told you the address but for now you can go to www.thelibertyadvisor.com and the other offer i had was that howitsrig.com actually brings you to the libertyadvisor.com and if nothing else i just want you guys email so that way i can keep and uh keep in contact with you guys and one of the issues i wanted to bring up is that by only promoting the uh you know basically anyone uh you know basically if you left them now to be promoted on facebook that what they're doing is they're giving really in-kind contributions to the Federal Reserve, or sorry, not to the Federal Reserve, they're giving in-kind contributions to uh, to the Democrats. And, you know, part of the reason why they didn't like what I was talking about is, you know, you've got a guy like me who's out there exposing the Federal Reserve. You know, he's actually exposing, you know, how these polls are rigged. And, you know, I'm just exposing things, you know, you know seven ways to Sunday on all these different issues. And, you know, the what I wanted to do is actually go into my Facebook right now, and there's a if you run a page, there's a spot called Insights. And let me back up one second here because what I've been running for months now, you know, this wasn't just the other day. It was I've been it says the Liberty Advisor supports decentralized social media platforms, and you should too. You want to know why? Because the whole reason that Alex Jones is banned is why you should uh, promote the decentralized platform like Steemit, S T E E M I T, where you actually get paid. In crypto and we'll do uh, a whole show on this uh, later on but also you've got gab.ai where you can find me at the liberty advisor on steam it you can find me at tim pichot p-i-c-c-i-o-t-t -T. we've got the liberty advisor.com that i mentioned before and then we do have you know these podcasts that you can find the apple google podcast podbean player.fm and stitcher and that is so important that we get off you know their own you know electronic gulags and yeah i did just mention some of these electronic gulags but you know guess what you know for now you know, I'm so far underneath the radar that you can still find me there. But again, I did promote the other decentralized platforms. I promoted my own platform, LibertyAdvisor.com. I promoted Gab.ai, which you know, at any point, you know, Microsoft could take that down, and then Steam it. Where you know, again, I have not actually. I need to stop saying again. I keep saying this. Keep saying it again and again and again, and it probably drives you guys nuts. So that's one of the things that since it, since I'm recognizing it, I'm sure you guys are recognizing it, and we're just gonna you know have to stop that. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the Insights tab. We go over here to the Insights tabs. We're going to go over to the like column. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it up since I started Facebook, which was actually right before the election in 2016. So we go back to August 28th was the day it all started. And what you guys can see on the screen here is that nobody was following me. And then all of a sudden, you know, we get up to, you know, a thousand people, um, middle of September 14th. And then boom, September 15th, I actually get banned off Facebook where supposedly I was hacked. And I was happened to be on Facebook and was actually screenshotting the whole thing. And then we get up to, you know, miraculously within like two months, get up to 30,000 people following me and then complete flatline and actually a little bit of a decrease. And then you go over to net likes. Oh, and this is actually uh, crazy. So net likes, it actually, for some reason, doesn't actually show the data anymore. And it did show the data like just like an hour ago when I was here. So I don't know what was going on, but. You see, September 2016, it, it actually for some reason shows shows nothing. Uh, I'm not sure why it why it does that. Uh, this is actually really crazy because what I was what I was gonna show you was where where it went from having a thousand people a day following me to all of a sudden you know zero. So I don't know why it decided. And you guys who are watching this right now can actually see this. But uh, where would I go next? Right, likes, paid likes, organic likes. Um, I don't know. Let's maybe let's go over to follow. Maybe I can maybe I can get it on the uh, on the followers tab. Yeah. Oh, this. So all right. So here we go. This is absolutely insane. So we go from uh, what is it? Not uh, one thousand twenty two people following me on November eighth and November twenty fourth too. 
So we go from a thousand to you know a week later uh, two, and and it's just really hard to kind of navigate this. But yeah, November eighth actually is forty seven, and so it must have been the day of the election. It was over a little over a thousand. But you know, you if, if anyone has seen a more extreme drop than this. Uh, you know, you can email me at tim at the com and please let me know. You know, that's like a 99.92% uh, 99 like reduction, which is just absolutely insane. And so now what I'm trying to do, my uh, internet is uh, being slow, even though I you know, pay for the 200 uh, you know, megabyte upload. And that's another thing. I mean, can the can Cox Cable, you know, decide they're going to ban Alex Jones? Can, you know... Um, you know, uh, can you know the water company just shut off his water? Can the electricity company just shut off his electricity? I mean, where are you guys going to go? And then you got the same people who are saying, "Oh, you should bake the cake," uh, and who are now saying, "You know, oh, well, of course, you know, they can they can ban Alex Jones," which I think are two completely different different arguments. Um, I don't know. Over right now, what we're looking at is the reach. So what I'm going to try to do is go back to the beginning because you know a similar story. Back, 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 back. You know, sound like uh, like Chris Berman or something. But here we go. We go. We're on the 28th, and you guys are looking at the post reach again. This is not about me. This is about you know the and, the, and this is and I didn't even make. A, see, I almost I almost said again. Stop myself that time. But you know this and the reason I didn't I could have made this video a year ago, and it's only to you know illustrate or be able to put dovetails in what's going on to Alex Jones. But you know you see the the reach back when nobody was following me and it still get pretty good reach. Uh, you know, a lot of this is organic. So let's go back to the organic, you know, still getting, you know, decent reach. And, you know, now, again, I have not, I'm sorry, damn it. I said, I need to have like a, like a swear jar for every time I say again. But over here, you see that basically nobody, uh, you know, nothing is being reached. So one, so the last thing I want to show you guys, because I know my wife is making dinner right now, is some recent posts that we've had. And so here's one of uh, Vladimir Putin. Let me. Sorry, Hillary, I didn't know that the 400 million was supposed to be a secret. And this has to do with when uh, Putin and Trump were talking uh, together at the summit. So we, so this only reached 2,288 people total, but there was 2,700 and so 2,725 reactions, more reactions than people even reached. So that meant that some people liked it and shared it rather than just sharing it or just liking it. And just, you know, pretty insane numbers. So over one and a half thousand likes, we've got uh, 24 comments and then 1.1 thousand shares. So over a thousand, so 1.1, uh, so 1,100 shares and it reached 2,200 people. So that's a 50% share rate, which is, excuse my language, fucking ridiculous if I do say so myself. And I'm not really taking credit for this meme. This is one of the things that I, I shared. But uh, I did, leading up to the election, a lot of those memes were ones that I actually created. And really on the, what was this, the same exact day, uh, same story. We reached 2,030 people and had 2,300 reactions. Absolutely insane. So we had uh, 1.2,000, uh, 1,200 people who liked it, 1,000 people who shared it, and it reached 2,000 people. So again, another 50% share rate. And this is uh, Dinesh D'Souza saying, Putin tried to influence the election. So did FBI officials, Comey and Strzok. As for the DNC, it actually rigged Hillary's win over Bernie. And yes, that is something that is uh, definitely true. But, you know, the numbers keep going on and on. And, on. and one of the reasons, and I almost said it again, but didn't say it this time, is let me try to pull up. Uh, where is this? So this is from November 17th, 2016. Screenshotted. And what does it say? The real hashtag fake news sites. And then I uh, tag Zero Hedge. Infowars, uh, Liberty Talk FM, uh, Barry Hess, who's running for governor out here in Arizona, Coast to Coast AM. I uh, tried tagging Owen Schroyer, but it didn't let me. Uh, tried tagging uh, tag Breitbart. And in it, what do you see? It's called fake news sites. And I have Snopes, Washington Post, Huffington Post, Political, PBS, New York Times, The New Yorker, Slate, Daily Beast, Daily Cost, Mother Jones, Salon, CNN, MSNBC, NBC, CBS, CNBC, ABC, USA Today, Think Progress, Media Matters, the SPLC, Southern Law. Poverty Law Center, most of Fox News, Vox, Talking Points Memo, The Democratic Underground, BuzzFeed, Gawker, anything by Paul Krugman, PolitiFact, FactCheck.org, and many, many more. And do you want to know what is absolutely insane about this? Who's the one person I named on this? I named Paul Krugman. Who won Donald Trump's award for being most fake news? Paul Krugman. And again, you see the date here, November 17th, 2016. That is the same day that they came out and said that we are fake news. And so I turned it back and them said, you are fake news. 
I think about only, uh, I think like 90,000 people actually visited my page that day, which, you know, isn't insignificant. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that it took off because of me, but I was just part of the overall, uh, you know, zeitgeist along with InfoWars, along with probably a lot of you out there who are saying, you guys are calling us fake news, you're saying all of our sources are fake news, you're saying InfoWars is fake news, you're saying Zero Hedge is fake news, you know, you guys are the fake news. And so, again, it's not really to tell myself, but, you know, there is a lot of things that have been sort of at the forefront of, and now you can see, you know, kind of guy who's, you know, showing how the election has been rigged, you know, showing how the polls are rigged, showing how the economic data is rigged, showing how the Federal Reserve works, showing that, you know, the who the fake news are, you know, using, you know, I've got a really good memory so I can point out all the bullshit that I've said time and time again. And this is why they do not want my message getting out there. But, you know, I do, uh, you know, appreciate you guys listening to this. We're going to be back now doing this regularly. I've got, you know, my actual, uh, like, whole podcast studio set up, hoping this sounds okay. I put in uh, different sound tiles that are actually in front of me that you guys cannot see. But, you know, one thing you guys can do that would be a big favor if you can go to, you know, any platform that you listen to and actually, you know, make a little review, maybe give me five stars. Uh, if for whatever reason you don't want to give me five stars, maybe I say it again too much. I know I do uh, promise that I will stop saying that because I am not, you know, media personality. I am a financial advisor just out there trying to make the world a better place trying to actually promote things like blockchain so then that way the you know the tech powers that be who are trying to centralize all the power that they can actually be defeated because they will be defeated they can be defeated they are going to be defeated and if you guys keep listening to this podcast we're going to be interviewing the people who are helping make this possible and you know really it's you guys who help make this possible so thank you guys for listening and talk to you guys later take care bye